It is now time for an I-70 series match. This bout set for one fall. Welcome to the National Wrestling League St. Louis. I'm Ben Miller sitting here with Ryan McGillicuddy. And this is an I-70 series matchup featuring this man right here, Lockdown, Ray Briggs. Well, it's a real treat to the St. Louis crowd here that there's no Roscoe Leach, unless he makes his 20 second delayed entrance that is annoying to me every time I see it. But Ray Briggs, man, he's getting more hand slaps in St. Louis than he does his own town of Kansas City, I think, Ben. Look at Ray Briggs, always excited, always ready to compete at the highest level, no matter if he's here in St. Louis at the Castle Normal Ballroom or at the Scottish Rite Temple in Kansas City. And I, for one, am really, well, it looks like lockdown has something hey, to say. My name is Lockdown Ray Briggs. And I'm here representing NWLKC. Yeah. Now, last week, back in KC, Cornell Douglas and Castle put a beating on my manager and my coach, Roscoe Leach. That's right. Uh, if, uh, all you fans on YouTube maybe saw that. talk about it, I just showed you the video. Oh, he, well, he'll go to see the video. Snapping those tongues, he could... Yeah. Oh, no. That That's not going to hurt him. Mistake. And now Cornell <laughs> Douglas is raining rights and lefts into the midsection. Oh, it just <laughs> clocked him right yes. across the face. Bosco <laughs> Leach is out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm sure you're going to not defend Cornell there. The guy just tried to give him a low blow. You think that was fair? The match was over. And Ray Briggs now trying to come to the aid of his agent. And Roscoe Leach is getting the beatdown of his life right here as yeah. he chokes him <laughs> with those barbecue tongs right in the throat. Look, he's choking the life out of poor Roscoe. I saw his barbecue. That's the best piece of meat that he touched with those tongs all day long. Look at that, just choking away on Roscoe Leach. He's choking the life I out of poor Roscoe. He's so purple, I can't tell where Cornell Singlet begins and his face ends. Absolutely despicable, no matter how many times NFL, I see it. You learn a little bit. And one thing is, you always get your teammates back, you always get the coaches back. Now tonight, I'll put the lockdown on Xavier Church, then I'll put the lockdown on Cornell Douglas, and I'm sure I'm gonna put the lockdown on Castle. Do you buy anything this guy says? I mean, Roscoe Leach, he follows that guy. That guy looks like Colonel Sanders, and he's a moron. But this guy, Xavier Church, man, this guy, look at this. He is a beast. Six foot six, what, 275 pounds? He's a big man, and I think Ray Briggs is in trouble. Ray Briggs is definitely going to have his work cut out for him. This is the second time that we've had the opportunity to see Xavier Church here in the Casanova Ballroom. Very, very impressive first outing last time here in the Castle Oval Ballroom. And if he hits you with that hallelujah, it is lights out for his opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest Ladies is he's undefeated fall, still, says he's and is a part of the I-70 series where Kansas City leads St. Louis 13 to 8. Your referee is Michael Crace. Introducing first, to my right, Representing NWL KC from Tulsa, Oklahoma, weighing 205 pounds, Lockdown Ray Briggs. And his opponent, representing NWL STL from Bettendorf, Iowa, weighing two horn. Weighing 246 pounds the undefeated Xavier Church. He is undefeated. 
a clean one and zero. He's only wrestled here one time. It's hardly. It should be. It, it should be a. It's a very far stretch to say that he's undefeated. I mean, no, one it's not a stretch. It's, it's true. You might want to say it's not as not as a big of a total as you want, but it's no stretch. He's undefeated, and Ray Briggs is about to get schooled here by Xavier Church. Xavier, look at the size difference. Now we know Ray Briggs is a phenomenal athlete, NFL standout, absolutely. But you know, Ray Briggs is a cornerback, a defensive back. You got Xavier Church. He looks like a, a linebacker, a defensive end. I mean, this guy is going to throw him around like a little kid. Or an elbow tie up to start off this matchup. This is an important I-70 series matchup between Kansas City and St. Louis. Kansas City has been leading the pack this entire time during this I-70 series. And I think Lockdown would like nothing more than to get the proverbial trophy of a win here in St. Louis and take it back to his coach, Roscoe Lee. Yeah, Kansas City is just taking St. Louis behind the woodshed. I mean, it is horrible. They've doubled up and then some against St. Louis in this rivalry series. We'll see if, if Xavier Church can get the Duke over Briggs. I don't know if Briggs really wants to start pushing guys around the size of Church. One thing's for sure, since his last outing, Church is a man that we've seen exude so much confidence for a man that has only been in an NWL ring now his second time. This guy means business. Everything he says and does, he says he is heading straight for the top of the NWL STL. Nice leapfrog over by Lockdown Ray Briggs, and there's that beautiful drop kick. Very nice. Perhaps has one of the highest and best drop kicks in all of professional wrestling. Ray Gagne is, is smiling somewhere up in Minnesota there, Ben. And Xavier Church lying on his back. Look at that, wide open for that, that big fist coming down here. Get up, Xavier. One thing's for sure, lockdown Ray Briggs since picking up a few victories, some much needed victories after signing to the Leech Talent Agency. Nice basement clothesline by lockdown Ray Briggs. After signing with the Leech Talent Agency, he's really exuding a lot of confidence, that and that translates into, uh, into more productive matches for the once winless lockdown Ray Briggs. Now, Ben, if you, if you, if you had some kind of uh, career in broadcasting, which you don't, but let's say you did, would you sign with Roscoe Leach? You think that guy's going to get you a job? Look at that big boot. That size 16 boot just took locked down Ray Briggs right out of his boots. Now raining down right hand yeah. to the forehead of Ray Briggs. And there's a, maybe I wouldn't sign with the Leech Talent yeah, Who agency, would? Helen but, Keller would. Who else? But he seems like a good enough guy. I, I would trust him to maybe, oh, you know, handle a couple of my business affairs. <laughs> I wouldn't say all of them. No but. wonder why you're always broke. That guy's an idiot. And Ray Briggs came here. He has a shot today. There's no Roscoe Leach here. And look, Xavier Churchill putting him up in a very precarious position now. Oh, <laughs> just kicks him right in the midsection. Field that, goal that, is good. I was going to say, that went 50 yards right through the uprights going go. for a cover. Come on. Only gets a two count. Xavier Church, did you see the way he placed lockdown Ray Briggs on that top rope? It was, it was effortless for the big Xavier sure. Church. What's he into now? Chin lock. You know what? Xavier Church, since joining into the ranks of professional wrestling, he told me he's put on almost 100 pounds in size. Now, you see this guy walk around. He's still a very young man. He's 19, 20 years old at this point. I mean, this is a guy that has a, a very high ceiling, and he continues to climb in just a very short amount of time here at NWL. I'd be curious to see with all those athletic gifts and the size and strength of Xavier oh. Church, how long he's going to be able to carry this undefeated streak, and will he carry it right to the NWL STL title? Oh, so now you're talking about the undefeated streak, like it's something big. That's oh, good. That's, that's not oh, at all what I said. And he still has to get through lockdown Ray Briggs, and after a leg lariat like that, his chances seem further and further away. Briggs getting all... Hulked up there. I don't really think it's going to help him against Church. Church still trying to get up. He better strike when the iron's hot. If you can get that big man down, you better keep oh, on. Look at that. Vicious headbutt right to the side of the face and jaw of lockdown Ray Briggs. This could be his move. Oh, no. I thought he was going for hallelujah, and he decided and lockdown Ray Briggs actually gets out of it. Scissor kick right to the back of the head. That's one of his signature moves. No. No. 
Xavier Church's undefeated streak almost went right out the window with that scissor kick. I'm glad you defined a streak like I do, one. But you know, you look like Booker T on that scissor kick. I mean, I am always impressed with the athleticism again of Ray Briggs, but I don't know, he's going to the top and he's gonna get caught maybe. Oh. He looked like he was going for a cross body block. Xavier Church plucks him out of midair. Look at this. this. Could be setting him up. And he lands it, hallelujah. This match could it's in over. fact be over. Three, yeah. and that's it. Xavier Church, after connecting with Hallelujah, breaks up name. another victory, his second victory in his undefeated streak. Xavier. Xavier Church looking great in his two matches now at NWL 2-0 as the winning streak continues. Xavier Church. I'm sure that you the first one to buy an Xavier Church shirt once it comes on sale. You seem to be his biggest fan here at the Castle Oval Ballroom. He's a big man. He's intimidating. He walks around that backstage, especially here in St. Louis. He looks pretty, pretty impressive. Folks, we'll be right back here on NWL STM. Hey, I'm Kyle O'Reilly, the violent artist, and you're watching NWL Real Wrestling. Gentlemen, the following contest is set for one fall and is a three-way tag team match. This bout will be contested under Lucha Libre rules, where two men at a time are legal. Any man from the outside can tag any legal man, and when a legal man is thrown to the outside, another man may come in and fill his place. Well, there you have it. Welcome back to NWL STL. And we have a six-man tag team event headed for all you great fans watching us on YouTube and the comfort of your living room. Five Direction, this new boy band, if you will, are making their way to the ring. Chippy and C-Note, man, these guys are great. They're putting their first CD together as we speak, man. Crazy, but there is something unsettling about these two guys. No, I, I, I don't know. It, Why would you say that? Well, here comes guys that I, I actually I like these guys. Here come the Party Crashers, Spike and Boulder. These guys are so loved here in the Casanova Ballroom. Yeah, you like these hooligans, these guys that walk around, all they do is drink and party all the time. Is that how you think you get ahead in life? No, you make CDs and dance and vents. That's what you do. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. That hair is a little out of control. Look, you want to walk? Are you going you know, to take him to show him to mom? It looks like y'all are serious, but no matter what, these guys are all business here in the ring. The party crashes. There's Boulder, you know, getting some love here from the fans at ringside. Spike making his way into the ring. These guys do. Oh, looks like he's got the microphone. Oh, does he have a microphone? Why are they hugging Ben Simon? They're really giving a lot of love to Ben Simon here tonight. Oh, here comes the buddy system. Oh, not the cape. And buddy shit, look at where's, where's the other half of the buddy system there? Oh, it looks like one of those horse donkeys without the oh, head Oh, and there they are, Skylar Beckett and Javi Torres under the gilded wings of Buddy Shepard. You think that's okay? You think it's cool that some guy comes out here and has two grown men underneath his cape? That's disturbing. Far more disturbed. Far more disturbed by Five Direction than I am the Buddy System. You know, I was all anti-Buddy System when I first saw this guy. I thought he was somebody that you couldn't trust your money with, that he would take your money. But I think this guy, he's a good guy. He's led Javi Torres and Skyler Beckett to a brighter path, a brighter future, if you will. Well, their path wasn't very bright before, so yes, it's 1% it's better, I guess, at this point. Javi and Skyler finally have some direction in life. That's just sweet. Buddy Shepard is a weirdo. He's got that new shirt that some people have bought. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about those people, but I guess you're the talk of the parties. I mean, Five Direction, if you want to pick a winning team, obviously you go with these guys. They're entrepreneurs. They, have, they don't need some little sidekick in the corner. They're here just getting business done. 
crowd may be evenly both for the party crashers and the buddy system. And no matter what, Boulder dancing around. Boulder looks like he, he slept on the wrong side of the bed last night. Look at that hair. Looks horrible. What about it? It's kind of impressive, actually. Oh. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the name's Chippy. Chippy and Cino, of course. I mean, if you think one direction is okay, I mean, five directions is obviously five times as good. I don't, I don't think one direction is good. So well, you're not the demographic. I mean, obviously, you heard the, the beautiful women here in St. Louis squeal when they come out, all zero of them. I mean, like, it, it's not because if they're in other towns, it'd be better. If they're in Chicago or Kansas City, like real towns. I, I'm so confused by the way. This is our actual our first time getting to see Five Direction in actual competition here in the NWL. The last time they were here, they, they kind of danced their way out of the match. It's very bizarre behavior from this new team of Five Direction. Was it? Is that uh, that's Chippy, right? That's Chippy in there, sure. C Note taking pictures of him. Spike in the ring starting off with Chippy and C Note. Double <laughs> shoulder blocks. Look at these guys. We're working on the choreography. Right. <laughs> I mean, the boy bands and where the money is, man. I just saw some 40 year old people in Kansas City the other day going to see new kids on the block. I mean, that's sort of cool, I guess. A springboard side headlock by Skyler Beck as he clamps down on the large neck of Boulder. Boulder, the bigger of the two members of the party crashers. And keep in mind, wrestling fans. This match always oh, contested under each of rules, which means if one of them slides out of the ring or gets thrown over the top or in any way, shape, or form falls out of the ring, another member of that team can come in. Has Ben Simon explained before this match? Yes, Ben Simon, of course, always sticking to the letter of the law and everything. And uh, Skyler Beckett and Boulder in there now. He, as you talked about, you can tell by Boulder, he's a little bit bigger, but obviously the hair is unkempt. Boulder scoop up and Skyler Beckett. I mean, he, he is underestimated for his strength here at the end of the well. A little quick splash there by Spike. Boulder comes exactly. in with a senton. These guys are impressive and it's surprisingly agile. Going for a cover here. Buddy system just getting beat up pretty good here by the party crashes early on. Skyler Beckett has had some impressive showings here in NWL STL, but I don't know. I, I've never seen him in the ring with the party crashes. We'll see how he continues. Trying to go for a back body shot. Puts the brakes on Spike, tries to punt kick in. It's in the back of the head. Blind tag made by Javi Torres. Javi Torres coming in the ring here. Double hip toss. Spike's in trouble now. And two basemen drop kicks connect right with the face of Spike in the party crush for the cover. And finally, I finally see Chippy and Sino coming up on the, the apron. And look, he's, he's, he's distracting Yahavi. <laughs> what was that? Sino came from the. Why is, why is he called Sino? Sino comes from behind. Because he hits that high Sino when he sings for their CDs. I mean, come on. Are there digital downloads as the cool kids do now? Spike. And now look at, look at uh, Chippy choking away on Spike, his neck over that second row. It's a little vicious streak inside five direction. I guess they would have to be. These guys are probably the guys that got bullied a lot in high school. Why would you say that? But well, these guys are popular with the girls. They get on, they make some money. I mean, C Note's the smallest guy in ringside right now. I, I believe him or, or Javi, but C Note in there just putting it to Spike. You're not giving them any credit at all. C Note in there with Spike. Locks on a front chancery. I thought he was going for a suplex here. Tags in to the, Chippy. To the large. Chippy. Chippy. How can you not be smile when you say Chippy? Obviously, he smiles when he says it. What is he? I mean, not staying on the offensive. That's a big mistake against somebody like Spike of the Party Crashers because he is known for his unorthodox offense, and he can he can catch you with a cutter or one of those uh, any type of maneuver from any direction. In the yeah, it really looks like he's really paying for that. Yeah, it looks like Chippy's in deep trouble here. Look, Cino coming in. 
See what they can do as a team here. Yes. A little flash, a little sizzle. That's what it's all about. Entertaining, some sizzle, lots of substance as well. These fans, I mean, these fans, these fans in St. Louis don't know anything. We got Chuck Berry. Look at us here. He just died. So the music scene here, apparently. Drags him down by his hair. Here we go. It's over. For another right cover, Spike gets out at two. Tag back. Quick, into quick Chip. tags in and out. I mean, I'm, so, I'm not denying that. Direction have obviously worked together before. They, they're well-oiled machine over here. Take it on, Spike. No, they're just putting their first CD together now. They're working on the choreography. Lots of hot girls hanging around. Here comes Javi Torres. Kicking booty and takes to age here in the castle of the ball. Beautiful German suplex. The amateur wrestler showing off his skills. And another German suplex for Spike. Javi Torres, very impressive in his last few rounds here in the castle. Behind. Here comes Skyler. Skyler with combination. Look at this. Rock kick and German suplex. I don't even know if Javi's shoulders were out. Chippy gets out at two. I hate seeing Chippy. Why? It's his Chippy. name. You think I like saying Ben Miller every week? Come on, look. Scoop slam. Nice. Impressive strength by Boulder. Almost looked like he was going to throw both members of the body system through the map. Come on, with it. Slam. Two back body drops. Crowd firmly behind the party crashes here. There's some steam right hands right there for Javi Torres. The pop on those things really rocking Javi Torres. How is Javi still standing? Those are just stinging jabs. Those, those aren't a knockout blow yet, but we could be seeing a knockout blow here. Or hits the ropes gets gets pulled to the outside by five direction and all four men are brawling outside Hobby Torres. Oh, God. Keep your eye on Hobby Torres, but is he doing here? No! Hey, Torres taking flight! Okay! Come hello! Lands on all four members outside the ring. Hobby Torres getting some adulation now, but all four just bowling pins on the ground as the crowd cheers for him. Skyler and Buddy staying away for some reason. You know, Buddy Shepard's always sticking his nose in everybody's business. There goes Chippy. Right through the ring, and here comes Cino, like a good partner, rolling him up from behind. Here we go. Cino almost scores a victory over Javi Torres. Javi Torres ducks a close like a brutal super kick. Lucha rules, as now, we said. That's right, Boulder back in the ring now. He's a legal man in there with, with uh, Javi Torres. Picks him up. Could be going for that power slam. Almost like an emerald flosion. Going for a cover, too. Oh, so close. Javi Torres gets the right shoulder up. Look at this. Five direction once again. Pulling Boulder out. Oh. Ramming Boulder's head into that steel post. Here comes Spike to the aid of no. his partner. Missing Cino, but Chippy's kick went right into him. So now it's Spike and Buddy system here. The other three are on the outside. Spike going to the top rope, and Skyler Beckett connects right to the, I think he caught a little bit of his toe right in the back of the ear of Spike. Could be, Look at this. Could be going for a cutter from the second rope. Oh. Sure enough, he drives Spike's forehead right into the canvas. Javi Torres no, with no, the ball. No, no, He's no, no, no. cradle too. Three. No. And that's it. The buddy system have picked up a victory in this six-man tag. And well, it looks like five direction. And the party crashes have to go back to the dry board, and the buddy system picks up a picks up another victory, important victory in the tag team division. Once again, the, the, the best thing here is Five Direction did not lose. They were not involved in that at all. They didn't win. They didn't lose. Oh, buddy wants the spotlight again. What a shock! What remember a charlatan when, this guy is. Remember, we heard Buddy was going to explain his recent abduction. Thank you, buddy. 
I love those boys. How about you? Yeah. Now I know there's been a lot of questions about where Buddy's been. When last you saw Buddy, he was thrown into a trunk. The trunk lid was closed, and the underground drove off with Buddy in tow. Now, I know I didn't like it either. What you didn't see is when that trunk opened and Buddy could put his eyes on the real world. Adam Ryan, Jackie Lee Bausch were nowhere to be found. Instead, there was a circle of cars and one brick-faced William DeVossi. And what brick-faced wanted was to have a good time at old Buddy Shepard's expense. And as much as I dodged and weaved and tried to convince Brickface to let the bunny system come inside him. I tried, buddies. He would have none of it. Things were looking dire for old buddy until he said the one thing you never say to a buddy. And that's, you have no buddies. Just thinking about a boil of my blood. And at that moment when he said those words, I saw red. As red as your t-shirt is tonight. Ryan, wake up. This is so boring. <laughs> and unfortunately, like his name, Brickface dropped like a stack of bricks. Thank you. Where I'm from, I'm not a trained athlete like those two boys, but I am a fighter. And unfortunately for me, after I dropped Brickface, I was tased like an animal. Brought to my knees and then thrown into the back of the trunk, dragged into someone's basement, and the door was locked. And this would repeat and repeat and repeat. But while this was happening, I was planning to make my escape and come back to all you buddies. Thank goodness. Thank oh, yeah. goodness. Thank goodness it's almost over. May 21st, a thunderstorm of thunderstorms had hit, and I had dug my way through the wall, and I had found a drainage pipe. And with each lightning strike, the thunder that followed, I'd smash the rock down on the pipe. Over and over, until I had broken free. And for each and every one of you buddies, I crawled to freedom through 500 yards of poo smell foulness. What? It was poo smelling foulness. That's the length of five football fields and just a little shy of half a mile. And what I did next is once I emerged free, I came right here to the Castle Loma Ballroom for each of you buddies. That's right, he did. He showed up and he disheveled. That's he always looks here. disheveled. Thank you, buddy. Oh, my God. Don't make his head even bigger than it already is. Will you be quiet for a no, second? thank you, buddies, for giving me the strength to do that. And what I did is I got Jackie Lee Bosch to follow me around back. And well, let me tell you something, buddies. Jackie Lee Bosch ain't here tonight. Yeah. So what I plan to do tonight is finish what I started. So Adam Ryan, you little pound puppy, I want you to come on out here and let's fight for the sake of fighting. Wow, Buddy really? Shepard not just told a story, a hairy tale, if you will, of his escape from captivity, but now he is calling out Adam Ryan of the Everett. Buddy! 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 Buddy, don't make the biggest mistake of your life. Do not challenge any member of the underground to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Are you insane, buddy? I've got the power of the buddies. Yeah! He's not afraid of anything That's not the enough. power of the buddies. Get in here right now. Do you people want to see Buddy Shepard fight me tonight? Yeah! Buddy's in trouble. Buddy's in trouble if this really happens. Well, it looks like Adam Ryan and, and Buddy Shepard, they're ready. Come on, baby. This may not You're be a good a fight. You're just a stepfather from getting the biggest butt kicking in your life. What is Adam Ryan doing? He's backing up from the ring. I thought we were going to see a fight. I'm ready for one. He's not a coward. I am not a coward. 
Exactly. I count three buddy system bozo that are here tonight, and only one distinguished member of the underground buddy. That's true. And if there's one thing that the underground believes in, is that every fight should be a fair fight. Oh, give me a break. Well, That's never been the what? case. Scar and Holly can stand back, step between those ropes. Let's do this right now. Chuck yeah. fired up tonight. He's ready for a fight. Buddy, if you want Adam Ryan, oh, I do. You'll get Adam Ryan, but not tonight. Make him wait. That's good. Buddy always gets what he wants. No, 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 not tonight. Let's do this, oh, I don't know, uh, June 16th. The next time NWSTL is here at the Casanova Ballroom. How's that sound, buddy? Well, I'll be here. Buddies, will you be here June 16th? Yeah! Well, then count the days till the buddy system comes for you. And when we get our hands on you... Good enough. You know what? Oh, now Buddy, Buddy Shepard's chasing Adam Ryan to the back. We gotta get some cameras back there and follow folks. We'll be right back here on NWLSTL. Hey everybody, this is the Raging Bull Maverick and you're watching NWLSTL. Maverick right now with that steel chair. Wait, sweet. Telly Cornell Douglas, he doesn't need to cheat to win, that he's the champ, and Letterman just swung that chair at Cornell Douglas and cracked Maverick right in the skull. They tried to play one of them. It's a three-way dance. Three of them. Letterman, Maverick, me. My title on the line. This right here is my pride and joy. Letterman, when we meet again, you're not gonna have anyone to have your back. I am St. Louis born and bred. This is everything I have. My city is my life. Letterman is St. Louis. The biggest fact is, I will be the NWL St. Louis champion. Next time we meet, I'm gonna walk out the new St. Louis heavyweight champion. Get used to it, cause once I win this title, all you're gonna see is this smile. I don't like Cornell Douglas. I don't like Maverick. I have already beat Maverick. And on June 4th, when I beat both of them, I'm going to move on as the St. Louis champion. <sighs> Letterman. All right, this is what we've been waiting for, fans. The main event of the evening, a three-way dance between this man, Cornell Douglas, the reigning champion, Todd Letterman, and Matt. And there's, and there's Cornell Douglas coming out with his associate cast. We'll see who walks out of here with the two-finger salute. I think it's gonna end up being Cornell Douglas. I mean, this guy has really been putting on a clinic as of late, and he's got his, his help to the side castle. I mean, who's gonna take down these two men? They've been quite clear. They don't like anybody in St. Louis, including the fans. Cornell Douglas and Castle have been on a roll as of late, especially meeting the Blood Brothers. They were the first tag team well to beat the Blood Brothers. What a feather in the cap sure. for Cornell Douglas and Castle. Not only impressive in singles competition, but tag team competition as well. Always looking dapper in his purple suit, Kane. Castle always by his side. And I mean, again, these two guys, if you can take out these guys, that's saying something. But here's a man who obviously can do a lot of damage in that ring. He's put on some great matches here in the short history of NWL STL as well. That's right, the son of Texas, the Raging Bull himself, Maverick, has really endeared himself to the fans here in the Casanova Ballroom. I think with each and every Audi, the fans here love Maverick more and more. And what's not to love, the guy is aggression personified. 
He's a guy that also just sort of crescendos up. He's a guy that walks into that ring sometimes with that slow pace. But I mean, this guy can really explode when he's in that ring, whenever he wants to. We've seen him just attack guys in the corner. I mean, he just continues to pound them. I don't know how guys walk out a lot. He has so much aggression picked up. But that also goes for Cornell Douglas. And here is your reigning NWL STL champion, Letterman. Five-star feed on the reigning defending NWL STL champion. The ascension of aggression ascended all the way to the heavyweight championship, and he expects to keep that tonight here in the Casanova Ballroom. Will Todd Letterman's era as champion end tonight as he takes on two of the biggest guys on the NWL complete roster, Cornell Douglas and Maverick. I mean, these three Bulls all in there. It's going to be an amazing sight. I mean, all of these guys are big, but also can do some pretty big moves, some pretty high flying moves, some some moves that would Ladies shock and you guys. Are this is doing. your Gateway Triple Threat main event of the evening. This bout set for one fall is a three-way match for the NWL St. Louis Championship. This match has no disqualifications. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee is Jay King. Introducing challenger number one, accompanied to the ring by Castle from Durham, North Carolina, weighing 250 pounds, the Raging Bull. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't time for Mavericks introdu introduction, Ben. That was the Bull City Please pardon boss. me, please pardon me, I misspoke. What is what Ladies is Ben Simon doing? Is he that Durham, nervous North tonight? Carolina, the Bull City boss, Cornell Douglas. There he is, the Bull City boss. Could Cornell he be your Douglas. next and champion? Ladies and gentlemen, challenger number two from Georgetown, Texas. He weighs 250 pounds. He is the son of Texas, the Raging Bull, Maverick! Or could Maverick take hold of the NWL and ladies and STL gentlemen, title? to my left, hailing from Afton, St. Louis, he weighs 349 pounds, making the second defense as the St. Louis champion, the five-star phenom, Todd Litterman! It very well could be this man walking out still as NWL STL heavyweight champion. I mean, the aggression he's got there going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cornell Douglas and Maverick. I don't know. These are three big hosses. We have not seen the likes of a match like this on the NWL STL side. The three biggest men in terms of stature are going head-to-head -head in a triple threat match for the title. One thing's for sure, you are not going to see a lot of wrist locks, a lot of chain wrestling, a lot of drop toe holds. What you're gonna see is a barn burning fight. These three guys, these three big hosses, as you said, are going to go toe to toe and beat the holy crap out of each other. Look at Cornell, he's saying you two beat each other up. Why? I'm gonna stand up, that's smart. I to agree with you. That is, oh, and Maverick is happy to oblige, firing some lefts and rights into the champion, the five-star Fino. Look at those big left hands. Maverick oh. is not going to walk away from any kind of fight or brawl. This is the kind of wrestling that I like, Ben, the brawling kind, where they just go in there and just beat the crap out of you, and that's what Maverick does best. Jillian displayed by the five-star Phenom, and a wheel kick connects right to the face of Maverick, and Maverick is down. And look, there you see the ace up the sleeve of Cornell Douglas as he starts putting a beat down on Maverick. Well, unfortunately He's for lucky Maverick, it's no disqualification. It's, there's no disqualification. Castle pulling him out, and look, Letterman saying he's going to try to jump over the top, maybe. Wait, no way, Letterman. Get Trying to get the crowd behind him. What is he doing here? Oh my gosh, he, the big man just flipped over the top rope and landed on all three. 
three of the men outside, taking everybody out. Impressive agility by the five-star Fina. It's a big man doing that move, Ben, and taking out all three of those guys. I mean, it's pretty obvious none of these guys like each other. Every once in a while, you get one of these triple threat matches where two of the guys are sort of friends. That's not happening in this match. Cornell, Letterman, and Maverick, no one likes each other. You saw Castle there get the leg of Letterman. Look at that. He's shown no alliance to anybody. It's almost like it's a it's a it's a two on two matchup, if you will, with Castle roaming around the outside. He is another weapon that Cornell Douglas, and quite frankly, Cornell Douglas doesn't need it. Cornell Douglas is a skilled competitor, and he's vicious enough on his own. But with Castle roaming around the outside. That just, I, I think that makes Cornell Douglas the front runner for taking home the championship. Well, of course. I mean, he's, he's definitely, I mean, he can make a case for any of these guys, but these two guys specifically right here, you have Todd Letterman, who will beat you with some crazy athletic moves, but Cornell Douglas is the kind of guy that you walk down the street, he's going to shank you. So I don't know what's going to happen in this match. Finley roll collapsing the chest of Cornell Douglas with that 340 pounds going for a cover, and Mavericks in to break it up. Then add in Maverick, who I said is one of the best brawlers in wrestling today, coming in here and taking out these guys. Like you said, I don't think there's going to be a lot of technical wrestling, especially when Maverick's involved, because he's ready to just beat these guys up and take the title. Maverick and Letterman have been in some wars recently in the Casaloma Ballroom, and they, they know each other so well. And then you add in someone like Cornell Douglas, who knows both of these competitors, and this is just going to be a vicious fight. So far, it's living up to what I thought it was going to be. Some knife edge chops in there, one towards Maverick, one towards Cornell. Oh, hard forearm sledge right across the chest, the big chest of Maverick, and there's a knife edge chop. Letterman! Is he going to be your champion after this? I mean, look at oh. this. Cornell Douglas. He ran right in the middle of that. Oh, hard left hand. Looks like now it looks like Letterman and Maverick are, are on the same side. Maybe they've agreed to work together, take out Cornell Douglas, and then that way they can fight it out. Well, that's what I always thought was smart. I mean, you have to try to pick your moments here, and if you got two guys that can sort of stick together, I mean, then you can get the advantage over one of them, and then you two could duke it out. I always thought that was smart. Oh, vicious right hand right across the face of Cornell Douglas. Now they're debating he's going to get the next shot in. And here comes that stampede of the Bulls that the go. Raging Bull is known for. Shoulder block, forearms, knife edge chops. Oh, <laughs> roaring elbow takes out Cornell Douglas. And so far the plan is paying off. And now the two big men are going toe to toe in the center of the ring. We'll never trust a Raging Bull, obviously. You just saw that. They work together, and then he turns on you like that. Todd Letterman now writhing in pain. Maverick standing over Cornell, and it looked like it was going to be Letterman and Maverick taking out Cornell so they could duke it out together, but I don't think Letterman knew that big boot was coming. Really wrenching down on that arm. Over that shoulder and that elbow, the left arm of the five-star phenom. If he takes that arm out, he won't be able to hit that spike driver. That's for sure. That takes one of the, the biggest weapon out of Todd Letterman's arsenal. Working over that left arm, left shoulder, continuing to do that. Well, we've seen this before, hammerlock position, leaving that chest exposed for all those clotheslines. Look at him screaming oh. at him. Hard clothesline, and Letterman is down two, oh. almost to three. That, that even was almost the leg. to three out of nowhere. And maybe if he would have hooked that leg, Maverick would have been walking out with the STL title. Every time we start watching this, every couple of minutes, I change my thoughts on who I think is going to walk out as champ. Here comes Maverick now. Possible submission move here. You know, Maverick is a guy now that looks like he might be taking home the title. Letterman down there, and Cornell still recovering in the corner. Driving that knee hard into the tricep and elbow of the five-star phenom. Maverick remains in firm control over Todd Letterman and over this matchup, quite frankly, because he keeps putting the boots to Cornell and keeping him outside of the ring. 
Cornell continues out there. Castle trying to get him back to back to the sidelines here, but Maverick now working over Letterman. Letterman pounding out of that. Letterman hitting with the other on the uninjured or the unworked on arm of there, fired with that right forearm. Now Maverick firing away with a chop, exchanging chops here. Oh, hear those big gunfire like chops. Look at Castle getting up there. Yeah, Castle finally gets what he deserves. A nice form right to the chops. Maybe that'll teach him to step, put his nose in other people's business. But just got just got a little distraction there on Maverick to allow Letterman to get a little come up. It's, but here it goes now with Letterman against Maverick. I don't know who's going to win this. Cornell tries to get back in, gets thrown out. Oh. And now Maverick and Letterman are going head to head. Hard reverse elbow to the chest of Todd Letterman. One thing's for sure, Maverick will never back down from the fight. Man, oh. Castle continues to show his presence. Oh, Ace Crusher hits Todd Letterman right in the center of the ring. Cornell Douglas is going to try to make a cover. Hooks the leg. Two count. I don't know if Cat Castle obviously getting paid pretty mightily by Cornell yes. Douglas to start continuing to get involved with Letterman and Maverick. I mean, regardless of what happens in this match, those two are going to want to have to beat the crap out of Castle after what he's done. In the last couple outings, Cornell Douglas had obviously has been using that vicious hard punch from the very beginning of his career here in the NWL, but has also started using the Dominator as one of his primary signature moves that he's been putting opponents away with. And if he hits one of these big guys with that Dominator, Cornell Douglas, it will be the whole city champion. Here we go, throwing him into the corner. <laughs> Hard reverse elbow, Cornell Douglas hits the ropes and takes Maverick's head off with a beautiful clothesline. Now Cornell trying to go for the cover. Is he gonna be your new champ? He gets a barely a two count. Todd Letterman making sure that that wasn't a three count as he hits Cornell Douglas in the back. All three men now showing that they are fatigued going into this matchup at this point. I mean, Letterman trying to get some crowd support here. He's the only one from St. Louis of these three. Letterman has had a contentious relationship with the fans here in the Castle Loma Ballroom since yes. day one. They, sometimes they love him and sometimes they hate him, but no, no denying the fact that the champ is from St. Louis, and, he's, and this is his second title defense. And look at this. They're just going on a merry-go-round here. Maverick, Cornell, and Letterman continuing to go back and forth against each other. Oh, Maverick trying to form strike <laughs> there by Todd Letterman. Yeah, blocked by Letterman. Continues to go on the offensive here. Cornell's just lying in the weeds over there. Oh, knife edge chop. Like I said, this was going to be a Donnybrook. This is going to be one heck of a fight and a chop by Maverick. If you want to exchange chops with anybody in the NWL, I recommend it not be Maverick. Look at that. Putting the brakes on was Cornell, but he got caught. Oh, out of nowhere. Was that the punch. hard punch? He, he just connected the hard punch to Maverick's chest. Oh. And there's, there's the spike driver going for a cover. This should be it, too. Oh, look at oh. that. Referee pulled outside by Castle. Right there. Oh, there's Lockdown. Ray Briggs. Ray Briggs coming in and putting the beat down on Castle. Why is he involved? He said earlier that those two assaulted him in Kansas City, and now he's so, here for some retribution. And he gets involved in this. I mean, Castle's been a major part of this up to this point. Ray Briggs sticking his nose where it shouldn't belong. He's in deep trouble. Castle just extended the life of this matchup as he saved his boss from getting pinned after that spike driver. There goes Cornell Douglas flying to the outside. Letterman standing tall, so maybe Letterman's going to retain it now. And now Maverick and Letterman stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the ring. Look at this, he's taking it to Maverick now. That hard punch has to still be having an effect on Maverick. Oh, wow! What impressive strength by the Raging Bull. What is Drew Gold doing out Gold? here? Marcellus Gaines isn't in this matchup. What is, what is the meaning of this? He's got, he's got a pair of knocks on. That is brass knuckles around the fist of Drew Gold. What a coward. What the heck's going on? He's coming in to capitalize on this war that these three men just went through, and it looks like he's going to crack Todd Letterman. Oh, look at this. 
Maverick's taking the knucks off Drew Gold. Yeah, th thank God he's not. Why did he? He What's puts going? on the brass knuckles himself. What? And he just clocked Todd Letterman right in the face. He just handed the knucks to Drew Gold. What the hell is going on here? Two, three. Oh my and goodness. That's it. Maverick is your new NWL STL champion. Why, Maverick? Oh my god. Drew Gold is with Maverick now? Unbelievable, Drew Gold. Oh, there's the confirmation that we all fear. Drew Gold is now the manager, the spokesperson, if you will, of our new NWL STL heavyweight champion. Man, what a turn of events we saw tonight in this main event. Maverick, your new NWL STL champion, with the aid, and I guess, of his new agent manager, Drew Gold, who is still sporting the colors of greatness, Marcellus Gaines as well, so I guess he's just added another client to his stable. And what a battle this was in three heavyweights, Can Cornell Douglas. What is this? What? No. Drew Gold was getting ready to say something. We've seen that right here. Jack Foster. What in the world is Jack Foster he coming doing? out here? Why is he getting involved in this? He wasn't in the main event. Jack Foster. Drew Gold. I don't even know what to make of this. What is, is Jack Foster even here? There, there he is, Jack Why is he Foster. coming out here? Why is he coming? He's pointing at Maverick. He wants a piece of the Raging Bull. And is this about the NWL STL Championship? I would venture to guess so. Jack Foster, who has been telling everyone that this is not pro wrestling, and he is pro wrestling. He's now making this part of him now, coming out here and getting in the face of your new champion. He said, this is my city. It's not your title belt. Are we going to have a match right here? Are we going to have a fist fight? What's going on between these two? Well, we'll see what happens if Maverick just got done with a brutal championship match. He's still, look how much of a man he is. He still wants to take on Jack Foster. Oh, and a sign of disrespect, and Maverick Good. hops out of the ring. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have to do anything. He just sweat through and beat up every but two big men. Jack Foster, unbelievable, coming out at the end of this heavyweight championship bout where we saw Maverick capture the gold for the first time. And what does this mean for Todd Letterman, Cornell Douglas, and Jack Foster? Maverick is doing the right thing. He shouldn't be putting that title on the line again, even if he wanted to. He just beat Cornell Douglas and Todd Letterman, and this guy, Jack Foster, some weird guy from, what I don't know, he looks like the Unabomber coming from some cabin in the woods. Been sitting there for 20 years saying he, this isn't pro wrestling, and he thinks he can just walk right in here and get a title shot? I think not. And as we end the show here in the Casanova Ballroom, we're left with more questions than we have answers to. Is Jack Foster on a collision course with our new heavyweight champion, Maverick? Or is Todd Letterman do his rematch? Folks, we don't know, but find out next time here. Next time we're in St. Louis, get your tickets at FightSTL.com. Folks, for Ryan McGillicuddy, I'm Ben Miller. We'll see you next time.